Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here on Plead Your Case with a four-part March Madness special. This will be the first part of the series. We'll be talking about the East region and obviously hit the West, the Midwest, and the South. I'm Logan Episcopo, taking you through this first segment. We'll have plenty more content right here on Plead Your Case. For the first segment here of the March Madness special, we'll be breaking down the Eastern region of the March Madness bracket. Myself, as mentioned earlier, Logan Fitzgerald, joined alongside my panel today, Spencer Fateri, Benicio DeFalco. Gentlemen, it's a great time. It's March, and we don't sleep till May. Let's get in no to this East region. We talked before, we only have one major difference between us in this East region. And Benicio, I'm gonna give it to you first. It's that eight, nine matchup that a lot of the areas we have been looking at, that's the tough pick to make. Between FAU, Northwestern, who is your pick? I'm going to go with FAU here. They have pretty much the same team as last year. They're very dangerous on the boards. Northwestern going in the tournament, they're, they've lost their last three of their last four games. And I think FAU riding this one, you know, they've been there. This is only Northwestern's third appearance in program history. And I think that has something to do with it. And I, I like FAU's chances in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with a little bit of something different. I know Benny went with FAU, and to be honest, with the season that FAU had, it was kind of underwhelming, especially with what they did last year in the tournament. So I really didn't expect them to get the AC, nor do I really think they deserve the AC. With that being said, give me Boo Booey and the Northwestern team. I think they can get it done. He's averaged around 18 points per game, 615 total points up until this point. If he can do his thing and be the man in that game, I think Northwestern has a solid chance of technically getting the upset against Florida Atlantic. Yeah, it's hard to pick a guy like Bowie who basically rewrote all of Northwestern's yeah. records yeah. this season, but I'm going to split the tie. I'm going to ride with FAU as well, Benicio. And yeah, I, I agree with you, Spencer. I don't think they deserve that eight seed, but for me, it's hard to look past the fact that they made it to the final four last year. They're returning 12 of the 13 players they had on that roster. I think, you know, what's the difference between being a nine last year and making a run and being an eight seed this right. year making a run? So that, that's just my take why I think FAU, but like all the other eight nines, I expect a, tough. A, a definitely a coin flip mm -hmm. for all of the eight nines in this bracket. But we have all the same picks for the rest of the games. We have UConn, San Diego State, Auburn, BYU, Illinois, Washington State, Iowa State, all advancing from the round of 64 into the round of 32. So just that one major difference with that eight or nine. Let's move in to the round of 32. Now, Benicia, I'll come down to you first. We have UConn and FAU being the matchup here. And I don't think, regardless, a Northwestern pick yeah. and the FAU pick, it's I think we can all agree it's UConn. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be UConn. I'm going to go with UConn here. You know, both teams making the Final Four. I, last year, I think this should be a very good game. It's going to be the battle of the boards. But I'm going to go with UConn, just too dominant. Yeah, like, uh, like he's, Betty said, this is a UConn team that pretty much returned to everyone, and the one guy that didn't return is on the Pelicans right now in the NBA. So this is as, just as strong as a team. Donovan Klingon's looked as good as ever. Um, I really don't think this game will be close. I mean, again, it is March, so we do see some crazy things right now. But, I mean, UConn, the number one overall consensus pick, they look exceptional heading into this tournament. Yeah, it's just going to be an easy, clean sweep. Give us all a UConn. FAU, you'd love to see another Cinderella run like last year, but... It's just not going to happen, as Spencer said. UConn returning majority of the players that they had last year. Now let's move down. San Diego State and Auburn. That's the matchup, the five seed and the four seed. Spencer, I'm going to switch it up, give it to you first. Who do you have, San Diego State or Auburn? Well, this could be a great game. I mean, this could be another one of those 5-4 games that turn out to be really, really good. Both teams get a really easy matchup in the first round. They should, uh, San Diego State should be able to take care of UAB pretty easily, and Auburn should have no problems with the. I know last time we talked about a school like that with Princeton, it didn't really go well for Jeremiah Miller, who used to be here for us. But, <laughs> again, it should be an easy one for Auburn taking care of Yale. I have San Diego State. Auburn has Jalen Williams averaging 13 points a game, but I just don't think this is a San Diego State team that, first of all, is coming off a run last year. They weren't supposed to make that run. They go to the Natty. They lose by, you know, 18 to a really good UConn team, but they didn't really lose anyone. This is another team in this tournament that brought everyone back, kind of like the FAU team. I just can't see them losing to an Auburn team. This is, again, a team that went through this tournament last year on a run. Can they keep the run going? I think, though. And this year, are we going to have a little bit of a difference yeah, here? Yeah, I'm going to disagree here. I'm going to go with Auburn. Although San Diego State, you know, you mentioned the defense, how loaded this defense is. They have the ninth best defense and defensive uh, efficiency. So I think San Diego State, you know, 
losing last year. They got a lot going in this year. You know, they kind of want that revenge tour. But I think it's going to be Auburn's offense that gets it done for them. In games this season, they have a scoring margin of plus 15. I think, you know, that's one of the best offenses in this tournament. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Auburn here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to once again, Spencer. I know we've been roommates for four oh. years, so I'm signing with Benicio <laughs> again. Auburn, they are efficiency-wise, as Benicio mentioned, one of the best offensively, but they're also pretty good defensively in terms of the efficiency side of things. If you look at all the stats, all the numbers, you can watch them play all you want, but the numbers, they typically do not lie. I'm going to take Auburn as well to advance to the Sweet 16. Now we'll move down to BYU, the number six seed, to Illinois, the number three. Spencer, I'm going right back to you. You're repping orange. Are you going to pick Illinois to beat BYU? Guys, I have been really high on BYU. I got to see them play in person, but I just don't think they're going to be able to handle the hot hand that Illinois is going to have coming off that Big Ten championship win against Wisconsin. They have three star set of guys. Terrence Shannon Jr., 23 points a game. They have Marcus Damask. He's averaging 16. And then a guy, Coleman Hawkins, who's played next to Jalen Green, who's in the NBA. He's averaging 13. Those three alone have a big three in Illinois. Um, BYU is similar to the PAC team in Geneva. They have one guy down low who will get you your boards, and the rest of those guys can shoot at will. So I will say it, it's going to be a good game. If BYU's three-point game is on, it'll be a close one, but I have Illinois coming out of the end by a little five- or six-point margin. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree here. I'm going to take Illinois. I think BYU's their, their threes and uh, their height keep them in this game. But I think the backcourt of Illinois is just too much for BYU, and I, I think it, that's the reason they win this game. I think it's going to be a big offensive performance from those two guys. So I'm going to go with Illinois. I'm going to ride with Illinois as well. Give me the fighting Illini. I think they make it to the Sweet 16. I do agree, Spencer, though. If BYU's hitting those threes, which everybody knows, you know, live and die by the three. That's the motto. If BYU's able to hit on those threes, they'll move on to Sweet 16. If they can't, well... They'll die by them, and they'll head out of the March Madness tournament. Now let's move down to a 7 versus a 2 seed. We have Washington State versus Iowa State. Spencer, we talked a little bit before we came on here. Not the biggest fan of Iowa State, but do you have them taking down the number 7 Washington State? Yeah, Logan, you mentioned perfect. For some reason, Zach Barat, a fellow commenter of ours, is really <laughs> high on this Iowa State team, and I just don't see it. I, I mean, congrats on beating Houston. They crushed them and they looked real good but a lot of times is the trouble with teams like that is you get a huge win you're going to go ahead and beat south dakota state so you've just beaten houston and then a 15 seed and then maybe you're riding too high and i think that's what's going to happen against wazoo i think wazoo the seven seed is going to pull off this upset purely based off the fact that iowa state is going to be riding this off isaac jones of wazoo averages 15 points a game and miles rice also averaging 15 points a game that backcourt duo they can do whatever they want when they're both on so I'm going with the upset. Give me Wazoo. I don't mind the pick, Benicio. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to completely agree with you here for those reasons you just said. And uh, Washington State, they really got the height advantage here, and I think that's going to help, especially in March. I mean, people don't really uh, throw in rebounds too much when it comes to the importance. I think rebounding is you know, one of the most important things in basketball, and especially you see those differences come out in March, and I think that's why I'm going to go with Washington State here. I'm not going to complete the sweep here. I'm going to ride with Zach Rod on the Iowa State Ooh. team. Now, wait, wait. I don't have them going much farther. I have them Ooh. losing in the next round. But Iowa State, it's just hard for me to look past the fact they have the second most efficient defense in this entire tournament. The, the old saying is defense will win you championships. Now, in this case, I don't have Iowa State going and winning the championship. But UVA I just think looked, that, UVA that defense the is... Other day. UVA's defense? Yeah, but then you had their offense that fell dry as well. I, I think Iowa State's offense is definitely going to play. Hopefully. They're not very efficient offensively, but I think Washington State's just a middle-of-the-pack team. They could get it done. They could exploit that Iowa State defense, but you know, being the second most efficient right behind Houston, it, it's just hard for me to overlook that point of the case. Now we move on to our Sweet 16 round. We have UConn and Auburn, all three of us, and then we have some differences moving on to the next side of things. Benicio, I'll switch things over. You're in the blue. You've got UConn. You've got Auburn. Who is your pick to move on? Well, before I make my pick, I just want to say I think this could be the best game of the tournament, and I'm going to say this. I might regret this, but I think whoever wins this game is going to go on to win the tournament altogether. And with that being said, I'm going to take the Auburn Tigers just because I think UConn has too much to lose. You see it going into this, going into the tournament. They're the number one seed. They won the championship last year. There's just too much going good for, the, for UConn, and I think they're bound to, 
to all fall apart at some point. And I, I think it's going to come against Auburn. Well, I have the UConn versus San Diego State team. And, I, and that's another reason I think San Diego State comes out against Auburn. You have a chance. These two teams went at it in the championship last year. And San Diego State, I mean, obviously these guys are seeing this bracket for a few days now. They know that there's a chance they can re-get that rematch against UConn. But I just can't see it going San Diego State way. I don't want to be boring. I don't want to be the guys on TV. But UConn just looks so good. It's so hard to pick against them. I will say, it's very hard to repeat. I have not finished my bracket yet, so I don't know who I want as a winner. I've got two options in mind. UConn is not one of them, just purely based off the fact that the last time a team repeated was in 2006, 2007, was that Florida Gators team. But it is so hard for a team to go through this twice and win that. But I will say, when it comes to UConn versus San Diego State, I think UConn gets it again. I think just San Diego State isn't able to get it done. You know, I didn't think I'd be coming up here and agreeing with Benicio so much. I'm going to take Auburn as well. I know, Spencer, we didn't plan it. I promise. We did not plan this to go down. My, my only concern about UConn coming into this game, and Spencer, may, maybe you can rebuttal this. I looked at the games from February up until now at this point. You know, who played who that was in the tournament in the months of February and March? UConn only played Marquette and Creighton. They played Marquette three times, beat them all three times, which is very impressive, a two seed over in another region. But the one game they played against a tournament team was Creighton outside of Marquette, and they got smoked. Yeah, they, they did. They got destroyed by Creighton. Now, is that just something to look at as like an outlier game, or is it a right reason for me to call for concern for you? No, I think it's definitely a call for concern. It is that one game, and again, it was not even close from the get-go. Creighton got to a huge jump. I think the thing that screams that this UConn team could make another run is no one really looked at this UConn team last year. And again, we talked about how these, yeah. this team brought back pretty much everyone. This team, I, I picked them. I couldn't tell you why I picked them last year, <laughs> but I did. I picked them to win it. I, again, I really couldn't tell you why, but this was a team that wasn't really on a lot of people's radars, and they went into this tournament and, I mean, beat teams, almost every team yeah, they played they were, by they 15 were to 20. I mean, they were a very dominant team, and they kind of just snuck up on everyone until they hit that Elite Eight. So it, it's definitely a cause of concern, and if they do have to play Creighton again, it would be only the only way that would be possible would be in the finals. So. If you're UConn, you're definitely kind of hoping that doesn't happen because of how that matchup went. But, again, it's definitely a valid point to be concerned about, but I don't think UConn really should be too worried about that right now. And for Benicio and I, UConn and Auburn, those are two of the most efficient teams overall in this tournament. UConn, the number one offense, they have a top 10 defensive efficiency. And for Auburn, they are in top 10 both offensively and defensively as well. Let's look over to the next side of things, okay? For myself, I have... Illinois and Iowa State. Benicio, I'll let you make your selection. Who do you have Auburn playing in the Elite Eight? All right, so everyone wants to talk about Iowa State's defense and how good they are defensively. I think they're meant to break at some point, and I think it's going to be Terrence Sharon, sorry, Terrence Sharon Jr. and Illinois. I think he's going to do it for them, and he's going to come up clutch for them down the stretch. I think it's going to be a close game, but like I said, I think Terrence Sharon Jr., down the stretch, he, he's just going to get it done for Illinois. As much as I would like Illinois not to win because I'm a huge Buckeye fan, I know ben Benny's a Buckeye fan, but they, I just can't see Wazoo continuing this little run. They're going to beat Drake. I have them beating Iowa State, but I just – this is again, this is an Illinois team that looked really good in the Big Ten Championship. They go out and beat – a lot of teams they beat OSU. Then they win it uh, against Wisconsin. So this is a great team. And then that backcourt of the mask and Shannon Jr. along with the big man down low of Hawkins – they're a tough team to play down the stretch, offensively and defensively. On both sides of the ball, they're a great team. Give me Illinois to advance that Elite Eight. You know, I said earlier, the old saying, defense wins championships. There's a new saying now. Offense oh, okay. Just like that. will win you championships. Okay. I, 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 again, I did not plan this with Benicio. I did not. Come on, I, man. Am, I am taking Illinois as well to move on to play Auburn. Look, it's a matter of a great offense in Illinois and a great defense in Iowa State. What's more likely to break in a big moment like that? Your scoring run dry, or is it gonna be the defense just, as mentioned, getting dominated by those excellent players that you're going up against? For Illinois, I just think that the offense is gonna be able to carry them into an Elite A appearance. Does it make them into the Final Four? I won't reveal that quite yet, but we'll get into it now. Spencer, I'm gonna open the floor to you first. Who from your Elite Eight will be advancing to the final four. UConn, Illinois, I don't want to be boring. Give me UConn. The numbers don't lie. Like you said, we are due for a back-to-back -back championship winner. Last time was in 2006, 2007. Not exactly the 20-year date mark, but 
we're getting too near that time. And if there's any team that's going to do it, especially with how that UConn team played in the tournament last year, I'm going to go ahead and take UConn. But I don't have them coming out of the Final Four. I won't reveal any more than that, but I have them <laughs> being stopped at that Final Four. All right, Benicia, yeah, we between, both have Auburn and Illinois. Yeah, between Illinois and Auburn, I'm going to go with Auburn. I think i got to stay true to my statement saying that whoever wins this one, the game between them and UConn is going to win the whole thing. So I'm going to go with Auburn here, although I'm, I'm going to say this. I think this is going to be an offensive uh, nightmare for both teams. I think it's just going to be both, both teams going at each other almost every possession with a basket. So I, I think uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Auburn. Now, Spencer's making that face because while the two shot of Benicio and Spencer was up, I slid my bracket over to him. I had Auburn as well. This was made fully before the show. I don't know how well you can see it, but this, this top part I mean, was fully made. The league will dive into an investigation. I had it Auburn, Auburn Illinois. Yeah, they will get a close, quick zoom in. There Ignore will be the deep east. I thought I was supposed to be in that one. Right Tampering here, is right in play. <laughs> go ahead and give us a Tampering quick is focus in play. right there. There we go. See? I, I mean, you can't make it up. No, there was no planning play. going into Also, scan that if you need and to And how does someone have that need of a bracket, really? I mean, come on. like, <laughs> Dude, I have neat handwriting. Why, what are you mad at me for? That's just too neat to All be right. true to me. I don't know. This, <laughs> this is what a real March Madness bracket is supposed to look like, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Mark's all over the place. I mean, it's just too neat to be true. I can't see it. Well, again, games don't start till 12-15. By the time we're recording, it's 12-15 tomorrow. Anything can change. May, who knows? Who knows what could happen on the trips there? What can happen, you know, warming up for games? You got to 12 o'clock to lock in the bracket. I'm taking Auburn as well to represent the East. Like Benicio said, I think it is going to be more of a defensive matchup in this game. Though Illinois is coming in with a high offense, and Auburn is as well, I think it's going to come down to who's able to make the stops in this game. You know, it's going to probably end up being 80-plus to somewhere in the 90s for this game. I think it's going to be like an 80-90 score game, maybe mm -hmm. even higher than that. It's going to come down to who can make that one critical stop, who can go on that one big run and really pull away with things. I think it's going to be the Auburn Tigers. I think they come out of this representing the east and as spencer mentioned i haven't finished my bracket either just my eastern region so we'll see if i have auburn going all we'll, the way we'll be done at what 11 59 brackets are locked at 12 11 59 that's 11 59 that's kind of like when you get an assignment due at 11 59 you at yeah, you know you right before night. midnight it's 11 58 i'm yeah. turning the assignment that's going to be the brackets yeah. so we got auburn We've got Auburn, and we've got UConn representing the East. But Spencer <laughs> said UConn is not going to be representing the East in the championship. Do, do either of you have any other picks for the other regions in terms of who do you think is going to come out into that Final Four? Um, I don't have any other picks. I just want to say Pitt will be here next year. That's all I want to say. Spencer, any, any comments to I that? I have Marquette coming out of the South, but a team to look out in the Midwest, one of the two teams I'm considering to pick to win, Ooh. Tennessee. Dalton Ooh. Connect is on an NBA resume build right now, and he's going to come out firing. I mean, this kid could come out and average 30 a game in this tournament. Tennessee is going to be fun to watch. I was in the process of doing my western part of the bracket. I think I'm trending more towards North Carolina. I know it's cliche picking all the one seeds to represent, but I got Auburn. I had to spice it up a little bit there, but wow. that's going to do it for our first part. Are you really hating on my Auburn pick right now? <laughs> it's all right. We're going to move on to the rest of of this four part series, as mentioned, this was the Eastern region being covered. We'll have the West, the Midwest, and the South coming up here on WCTV's YouTube page with Plead Your Case. Pop culture is everywhere. And if you want to stay on top of it all, look no further than WCTV's very own Nerd Alert, your one stop shop for everything pop culture. Join us as we talk about the hot new movies, TV shows, video games, celebrities, and everything in between. With a wide variety of topics, an enthusiastic cast, and unlimited talent, there's no place on WCTV quite like Nerd Alert. 